at no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. And welcome to the Author Brand Show. You're going to want to take notes on our guest today. Oh my gosh, great resume. Um, it's a very good, very good guy here. He's a serial entrepreneur, New York Times bestselling author, global keynote speaker. He's a co-founder and co-CEO of, of Apprentice, not The Apprentice, Apprentice, a platform connecting entrepreneurs with top college students. And uh, you know, he's the author of several bestselling books, including um, Get Over Yourself, Art of People, Likeable social media. There we are. We're looking down here and likable business. So welcome to the show today, Mr. Dave Kirpin. Dave, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks so much for having me, Doug. You bet. Glad to have you on, my, my friend. Listen, I'm, I'm really curious about the thing we talked about right before the show. Um, this is a reason you folks should stick around. He's going to talk, number one, about the primary reason, the number one aspect of better delegation. Are you delegating things properly or not? And if you're not, how can we fix it? We'll get to that in a minute. Before we do, I want to hear more about Dave's background, how he got to be so super successful in the author world, because this show is called Off Your Brand Show. So think about your background, Dave. Sure. Uh, I'll give you the super brief version since uh, since we were, we're on a we're on a time budget. But uh, I um, I've been building I I. I Got very lucky with my very first uh, business. My wife and I got married at a baseball stadium and sponsored the wedding. Nice. And wow. our, we generated so much media for our, for our wedding vendors that are after the wedding, our, our vendors said, this was great. What are you going to do next? 1-800-Flowers.com, who had sponsored our flowers, and Entenmann's, who had sponsored our desserts. And we couldn't get married again, so we started a business instead, uh, a marketing <laughs> firm that we were fortunate enough to sell uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I've since started uh, six or seven other companies. Nice. Uh, some succeed, some fail. Either way, I write about my experiences and my lessons learned along the way, hence uh, all those books. Again, very fortunate with my first uh, book, Likeable Social Media, the, the publisher came to me. And yeah. then that, uh, because that sold so well, it's a New York Times bestseller and translated to 14 languages now and in its third wow. edition. Um, I guess they keep they keep coming back for more books. So get over yourself now is my is my fifth. I love it. Um, that's the most recent one. Get over yourself. Yeah, we just launched last week. I'm super excited about it. And okay. uh, and uh, I wrote this one because in my experience uh, uh, working with uh, hundreds of uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs, uh, I, I think one of the biggest things that holds folks back is uh, is uh, is delegation issues. And so yeah. I wanted to solve that problem. I'm an entrepreneur. So so unlike sort of a typical author, when I think of books, mm -hmm. I think of it as an entrepreneur. What's the problem out there and how can I solve it? So right. the idea is if I can help solve this for people, well, they're going to hire me at Apprentice and they're going to have much better lives and careers as, uh, as, as leaders. And uh, so, so let, me, let me help try to help them. I love it. I love it. So give me the gist about the book. So it's a getting over yourself in terms of um, not just delegation, but like growing your company, hiring your first employee. What's the, um, who's, it, who's it for? Yeah, it's for uh, entrepreneurs, small business owners, and even um, managers at, um, at bigger companies, anyone who has a team or needs a team to succeed, which I would argue certainly all there's a lot of solopreneurs out there. But um, of course, my thesis is that as a solopreneur, it's very, very hard to make it and to scale and to live the life of your dreams without without a team. And so anyone from a solopreneur to an entrepreneur with a bigger team, uh, uh, will, this will work. Uh, I don't know if you want to recut that, Ed, uh, Doug, if you heard me. I, I think there's some... I didn't hear a thing. We could just say it again and we'll edit it. It's okay. Just take two. Okay, great. Uh, where did you Where did you lose me? Uh, the whole answer to, to why is it... Uh, who is it good for? Yeah. yeah. So um, so it, it's, it's great for anyone with a team. So entrepreneurs, small business owners, or even managers at bigger companies, I think it's a really good fit for. In fact, any solopreneurs probably should have a team if they, if they want to scale and grow and live the life of their dreams. So I, I would say that Get Over Yourself is a great book for anyone with a team or solopreneurs that know in the back of their heads that maybe if they had a team, they could grow a little bit more. Right. Let's talk about that for those people who are starting out or just, you know, hanging out the one or two person company thing. Cause I, I talk to plenty of them myself and I, I find the common thread, which is, yeah, I know I need to grow, 
but I, I'm at this income level. And as soon as I add somebody, it's going to like knock my income down to maybe, you know, nothing or a lot less. How do you um, leverage that so that you don't go under, don't have to go and get, you know, debt? Yeah. Well, first, let me say this. I'm going to give the answer away to the teaser question and say that, say that many people use many excuses around systems or tools, or in this case, uh, lack of uh, uh, financial resources to bring people on. Right. And my thesis is that these are all uh, smoke screens and that the real issues that folks have around delegation uh -huh. are right up here. And that's the second meaning of get over yourself. Um, the, the real challenges are the fears and the trust issues that we have, the need, to, the need to control and the perfectionism issues. These are the four what I call emotional detractors that keep us from, uh, from leading and delegating well. Mm -hmm. Now, to the point of your question, Doug, the folks that are watching or listening are thinking, but I can't afford to hire someone. Let me say there are a plethora of opportunities uh, and ways that I can prove you wrong. Um, on the lower talent side, Fiverr is literally a network where you pay five dollars right. to hire talent. If you cannot afford five dollars to hire talent, there's a really, really big problem, bigger problem than I than I can solve here. But Fiverr, Upwork uh, are starting points for hiring uh, a lower level talent at really, really affordable prices. Mm -hmm. At the next level, you could work with a firm like mine that provides top-notch college students, work with apprentices or interns. Um, you're going to pay more than you're going to pay on mm -hmm. Fiverr and Upwork, but you're going to get great, uh, a, a great uh, work. A virtual assistant companies in the Philippines and other countries provide great full-time people at a mm -hmm. very, very low cost, for example. And then at the highest level, you know, folks that say to me, well, I really need a chief marketing officer. I really need a mm -hmm. chief sales officer. I really need a chief fill in the blank, but I can't afford a chief, then I wouldn't wouldn't make any money. I say, think big picture and find yourself a partner, an equity partner, uh -huh. get us what I've done in my career is, is I worked with co founders and partners, mm -hmm. I get a, 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 a smaller slice. But guess what, it's a smaller slice of a bigger pie. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, the investment in a partner and my giving up equity in a business ends up coming back to me many fold, not only in the value that I extract over time, but in the value of my own time that's freed up by the work that that partner or those partners are doing. Yeah, that's it's so appropriate. I was interviewing one of our one of our author clients earlier today. He's got a $300 million company. And he talked about how, you know, the person you hire, um, number one, is he always looks at it as a marathon, not a sprint, of course. But he says that person has to bring in value to justify their salary. Of course, maybe not the first few months, but at some point they got to pay for themselves. So if you have that mindset saying, no, I'm going to make an extra 250 grand by paying this guy a hundred, you're still ahead of $125,000, but it's part of the, That's you right. know, again, to your point, it's probably mostly fear. They're afraid to like make that commitment, right? Fear, fear holds us back. Fear holds us, fear keeps people from starting companies, from hiring people, mm -hmm. from taking those chances. Um, but it's only through courage or by, de you know, courage is literally the definition of acting in the face of fear that we're able to get over ourselves and move forward. Right. And let me tell you, I I'm, I'm terrified. People, people are, are shocked to hear how afraid I am. Like, I'm afraid all the time. I'm just, <laughs> in addition to the fear that I feel, right, of showing up on a new podcast, making a fool out of myself, I'm afraid. I also have courage to act in the face of that fear. Yeah. And so the, the thing is, um, I don't like the word fearless because people are told to be fearless, but it's unrealistic. It's okay to be afraid. We're all freaking afraid. There's a lot of scary stuff out there. And in the face of that fear, can mm -hmm. you say, but you know what? I, I want to build something bigger for my kids. I want to build something bigger for my future. I want to swing for the fences. And if I strike yeah. out, guess what? I can come up to the plate again next yeah. week or next month or next year. And mm -hmm. that's the courage to act that, that, uh, that, that the real successes have, right? Michael Jordan said, um, I, I failed at far more shots than, uh, than, than yeah. nearly anyone on the planet. In fact, I think he does have more missed shots than anyone on the planet. Yeah. But guess what? 
That's because he made a lot of shots too. Yep, that's right. Give the ball to Michael. Yeah, it's it's so amusing. I have um I have a bunch of veterans as clients too, and this just never comes up <laughs> because like, hey man, I've been shot at, so I'm not really afraid of getting hung up on or embarrassment or rejection. I'm like, you're not going to die, you know. So I think that's one thing to keep in perspective. If you're facing fear of hiring someone or delegation, whatever it is, um, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? Oh, I could be embarrassed. And what does that mean? It means nothing nowadays because people forget about you in, in a couple of seconds. You're never good. You don't focus on you. It's mainly the internal voice, right? Oh, my. So totally. let's get to that, totally. that, that golden nugget here. The number one aspect of better delegation. Is that the fear thing? Yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah. It's, 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 you know, we started talking about mindset issues. So Doug, right. what I would say to, to add some additional, um, some additional uh, insight is around mm -hmm. trust. So a lot of people think, how can I delegate because I don't trust this person? Uh -huh. And what I would say is that, you know, trust is earned over time and uh -huh. that's okay. But we got to start somewhere. So what I always do is I start with the first very basic task and I let somebody earn my trust and then I give them chances to earn more and more of my trust over time. So I'm not immediately, um, you know, uh, uh, betting the farm on this person because they're they're building, um, building their way up. And of course, that works very easily with interns. Um, I, don't, I probably don't need to explain how that might work with an intern, but with but with a let's say a big position. Uh, uh, let's say I'm hiring a chief marketing officer, I might hire them for a two week project on contract first. And when they deliver the results of that two week project, then I might hire them full time. So it's building trust over time. And, 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 and that way uh, makes me feel more confident in my ability to delegate. Terrific. Okay. Uh, we lost you for a second there, but we got the, the gist of it of, uh, you know, basically sampling, right? Date before you get married. I, I like that aspect. Um, a lot of our um, CEOs and founders in our, in, our, in our network are also authors, and I'm sure they'd love to hear about your author journey. So, Dave, you can give us a little uh, preview on how you went from zero to hero as an author. I'd love to hear how you did that. Sure. Uh, again, very fortunate with my first book. I had a publisher reach out to me, mm -hmm. and um, it was, it's interesting because I always wanted to write a book, but I, I never had the 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 courage to figure out how to do it and um, yeah. they reached out to me McGraw Hill and I uh, did my first book with them and it was a a, a, a huge success mm -hmm. came back to do my second book um, I learned the hard way that everyone judges a book by its cover because yeah, my do. second book Likeable Business uh, is my uh, best book by reviews uh -huh. so objectively speaking it's my best written book but it's my worst selling book by far because everyone judges a book by its cover so yeah. unfortunately. So be it. Um, and then I did um, I did one self-published book along the way. It's a collection of essays. Um, and to those out there that are looking to self-publish, there's uh, great opportunities out there now. It's never been a better time. Uh, right. But then I returned to uh, to um, The Art of People was uh, my next uh -huh. uh, one that uh, worked with a very big publisher, Random House. They were wonderful. Uh -huh. um, and now uh, with, with uh, Get Over Yourself, I'm actually working with a, a new, another wonderful publisher, Ben Bella, uh, mm -hmm. which is a, a very entrepreneurial publisher. So I love it as an entrepreneur, and I, I, I have yeah. much bigger upside than I had with my previous uh, with nice. my previous traditional publisher. A, a lot of people are, are they go back and forth on that that question. I have it all the time posed to us as you know, self publisher or publisher, and you went with the publisher right out of the gate. Uh, they approached you, which is beneficial, of course, because that's you didn't have to put out a query letter and, and I you still have to do a proposal for them or what with McGraw. I did. It was an interesting situation where um, I wasn't going to have to. And then somebody convinced me to hire an agent. And so I hired an agent and uh, then uh, she helped me with the proposal. We did the proposal uh -huh. and I ended up still doing the deal with the, the first publisher, but the agent did help me. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm guessing you're going to ask around sort of to self-publish or to, to publish, right? No, no, I, I have my own opinion on that. I like to have other people's perspectives on it because I, I, I understand there's benefits, pros and cons to both, of course. So when you went with your first publisher, though, um, your agent said you better do a you know, proposal with it. Did you also have to um, do like a book tour, help with the marketing? They did most of it for you. How did it work on the getting it out there? I think I missed most of the beginning of your question. Um, we'll, we'll probably have to edit this, Doug. I, I'll tell you that. I, by the way, I was on another podcast 
with Riverside, they had the same issue and we went, ended up going to Zoom. So Riverside, you better fix the, your, your problem. Yeah, um, your I'm not, question I'm not really was around... with that right now. We may have to redo it, man, because that's it's. I use Restream and I never had it frozen like this. Of course, I use a direct do line. Wanna... I don't have a Wi-Fi. I do a cable to my house. Yeah. Do you want it? We can we can re-record re anything you want now. And then if it's really bad, we can set up another time to Zoom. Um, what was your, yeah. I think your question was around the marketing, if you don't mind. Yeah, marketing, yeah. We yeah, we got a few minutes. Call me some marketing. What what did they do? What did you do in marketing your very first book? Yeah, so I will say this. Um, self, a, a pub, a public, traditional publishers, even the best, biggest publishers in the world, mm -hmm. are not very good at marketing. And authors need to go in, uh, go in uh, eyes wide open and, mm -hmm. and, and have the right expectations about what publishers will do for them uh, marketing wise. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing that publishers do, and this is broadly speaking, uh, having worked with, uh, you know, three yeah. different big yeah. publishers is send out books. So if you can get publishers to send out books to influencers, to media, mm -hmm. Um, that, that is a, to, to, uh, decision makers that would buy in bulk books for, mm -hmm. for their businesses. Those are three very valuable sets of folks to send books out to. That is a wonderful thing that publishers do in fact, bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Besides that, you absolutely need to come up with your own marketing and uh, pro uh, pro uh, promotions and yeah. publicity plan and you need to work it. And, uh, it's like any, it's like any business, you know, um, you gotta, you gotta, work hard to, to build a campaign yeah. and to, to sell books, to do all these wonderful podcasts That's and right. hold your That's book right. up. Yeah, it's me on your, on your very first one. Um, how many, do you know, did they tell you how many people they send it out to or influencers and media and stuff, or you just start showing up on shows? My very first one was not a lot. Um, maybe a hundred, but okay. the best thing I did in negotiating my, uh, my deal with their art of people, God bless, uh, the folks at random house. They sent out a thousand books, which is all that's almost unheard of. In fact, it is unheard of, my agent yeah. said. But um, but yeah, that's and and Ben, ben Bella, uh, to their credit, is sending books out to everyone that I send uh, send them an address nice. to. So I, I appreciate that uh, a, a lot. Nice. But yeah, the for, for first time authors, it's harder. So I would say to mm -hmm. any first time authors out there, the biggest thing to push your publisher on before the deal is um, is um, is sending out books, how many that's books right. they'll send out. I love it. Love it. Are you working on another one now for the future or what? Taking a break. I'm taking a little short break because I just closed. Get over yourself, but uh, or launched it. But uh, I, I think I suspect my last book uh, will be a, around um, health, uh, something around health and wealth, and the connection between the the, the two. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna reschedule. I think I lost you again, but I. I, I suspect my last my last book will be about health and wealth and the connection of, uh, of the, oh, with the two. Topic. But uh, for now, I'm focused yeah. on get over yourself. I love that topic. Yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna send you a link to you and your team. We'll do this again. I'll go back to a restream. I apologize for the uh, Riverside snafus here. Um, hey, uh, quick question for you. I'm gonna stop this thing. This is this is a. a...